Hi, I'm uh, Maxime Dupart, creator of the Shadow World plugin. Welcome to the presentation of the 1.2 update. Uh, I would like to start by uh, thanking friends for my free college education. I even got paid to go to college, can you believe it? Incredible. I love friends. Okay, 1.2 update. We got uh, lots of uh, performance improvements. Uh, new presentation, there's a new... Uh, New demo maps. So the new, this is the current uh, demonstration for the uh, ocean level. You see that I've updated the uh, the shadow for the water material. Uh, I've uh, I've drawn some inspiration from the uh, water plugin. Um, there's a brand new landscape material for the uh, shadow walls. You can see it's much cleaner, much nicer presentation. It's all wrapped into a single material function which is fully commented and uh, it allows to uh, send uh, uh, information to the uh, landscape material using the data layer so right now I have a data layer input which is uh, providing me with uh, an ID for the ground material and an ID for the slope material and it's all used as indexes into the three arrays which are the uh, texture arrays or digma materials we have uh, five and six materials right now. Okay. So brand new materials uh, optimized with uh, multi-biome supports, data layers that are sending information to the new materials. And it's all done runtime. You can edit, edit the terrain. It's all taken care of. Okay, you can see my, uh, my layer here. Okay. So this is a new ocean map. There's a new blank map. So blank map is uh, an introduction map uh, to get you started with the plugin. So it's completely empty. There's a, a couple, some, explain, some explanation to get started. You can uh, right click uh, to access uh, the uh, folder of this uh, shadow world and open the define, the define function, the define metal function. And you can directly edit the terrain. It's uh, on a runtime mode by default, so you can open the material function and just uh, whatever you're doing now is going to be applied directly after you compile. So if I toggle this uh, boolean here off, I'm going to change my world into some sinusoidal. Okay. So a brand new world to introduce you to Shadow World and get started. Because I know it can be a bit uh, overwhelming with all, all the stuff we have. Okay, so brand new worlds. I'd like to show you see also one thing, which is uh, it's something experimental that I've de developed, which is a, a replacement for tessellation. So as you know, shadow world is a virtual aid field, uh, and uh, as tessellation is getting duplicated in the Unreal Engine 5 uh, and moving forward, uh, people have been uh, have been using a plugin from the Unreal, uh, from the Unreal Engine named uh, Virtual Aid Field. Uh, while you're using Shadow World, you are actually using a virtual aid field. So I've, uh, I've added a system to generate uh, something similar. So you can see the tessellation here, enabled. If I enable the cache system, you're going to see uh, the tessellation uh, being applied here. So it's really exper experimental because there's a lot, lot of work to, uh, to make it. Uh, uh, there's a couple issues uh, left remaining with this, but uh, you can see that I'm currently generating a uh, the tessellated mesh here. It's all done within Shadow World. You don't uh, you don't have to use any uh, extra plugin to make it work. Okay, so replacement for the uh, tessellation. I'm gonna disable it. Okay, new material, new uh, demo map to get you started. Uh, there's also a couple explanation on uh, the eight layer here. And the eight layer of the demo map is completely commented to explain you how to, uh, how to interact with the uh, default material. So here I'm storing. Uh, you can store extra information for the ground layer, for the for the ground material, for the material used uh, on slopes, and you can store an information about the biome you are currently using. And it all uh, makes sense when you're. Uh, it's all used when you're checking the reference map. So this is a new reference map. The new reference map is uh, sh showing you uh, a multi-biome support. 
using the, the brand new landscape method. Yeah, I'm gonna increase. I'm gonna increase the range here. Kilometers. So I have my two uh, eight uh, eight map brush here. I can uh, move them around. Yes, I limited my frame rate. Okay. So we're just seeing some after effect right now. This gap, this gap scene. If I don't want to see any gap, I have to disable one of the new features from 0.2, which is a segmented update. So uh, what uh, Shadow World was doing previously, it was computing each frame, the entire noise, and storing storing it into uh, textures, into a cache. With the segmented update, you have the ability to uh, to compute the noise of the world on multiple frames. So it's uh, it typically made the, the plugin uh, fully usable uh, on my uh, laptop using a 960M, while it was a uh, dropping a lot of frame rate when uh, I was moving around. So if I disable the uh, segmented world update, I don't have those issues anymore, I'm seeing. Okay. So it's also much smoother, but it's also uh, taking more uh, performance. But uh, I have uh, a great computer, so it's not a, it's not a big deal, but uh, still. If you want to ship your game on mobile or on uh, laptops, or you might want to, uh, to enable this option, Okay, so I have my brush here. What my brush is doing is actually is writing in uh, writing into the landscape uh, data layer. So the landscape has a data layer which is named the eight layer. Here, is doing nothing at all. But my brush here is mentioning. Oh, I want to write into the uh, the data layer. I want to write into the data layer named eight layer. And I want to apply this to the eight layer. So what's happening here is that uh, I'm reading the uh, I'm reading the flow map. Okay, so I'm reading the flow map, and I'm using the flow map to uh, it to uh, flip between two materials, the ground material and the material used on the flow map. So when the flow map is equal is a uh, is bigger than uh, 0.5, I'm going to use the ground material, otherwise I'm going to use the flow materials. And uh, there's another blending happening here, uh, which uh, which means that uh, if I'm outside of the range of the brush, I'm going to use the, the values that was uh, the, the material, the ground material, which, is, uh, which was used before, before the brush was applied. Meaning that uh, this brush is uh, changing the material on the ground, but uh, outside of the range, outside of the range of the brush radius, I'm going to use the, uh, the material of the uh, the original landscape. So as you can see right now, I have uh, grass spawning on the green material, on the green biome, and I have uh, rocks spawning on the red biome. And uh, it all comes down to this node here. So the uh, 8 map brush, the 8 map brush is sending a scalar parameter, which is the ID biome. And it's writing the, bi the biome ID number one into the uh, data layer. So it's uh, writing into the blue channel, so there's a red, green, blue channel. In the blue channel, it's going to write uh, this value to one within the range of the, uh, the brush. And uh, my uh, spawnables are using two custom materials. This is uh, the grass here is using custom material, which is going to only spawn when the biome is equal, is equal to one. So the green biome. And my uh, rock is only going to spawn using this material, which is going to spawn when the biome is equal to 1. So the red biome. 
you can have multiple layers of responsibility here. Okay. I'm just going to add the shadow to my rocks. There we go. Okay, okay. so I have a multi bay of supports. Um, I can play around with my brush here. Um, it's really, really fast to iterate, to play around. Everything is updated live. I can define materials used here. You can see that uh, there's a, a slope, uh, there's a slope texture here for this biome which is this one, which was computed in Gaia. And I'm using this slope to uh, define the new materials. You can see the brown here. So when I'm on the slope, I'm using uh, this, uh, when I'm on the, uh, the flow material, I'm using this uh, small rocks, otherwise I'm using the grass. And I have also the, uh, the slope material. So the slope material ID is equal to zero. So it's, uh, it's not gonna change the default value. But uh, the, uh, the other biome here is changing the slope material to 5 because I'm using this, uh, this new uh, this other material here. So it's changing the three materials here. There's a new material for the ground, there's a new material for the, uh, for the flow map, and there's a new material for, this, uh, for the slopes. So we've seen the segmented update uh, I told you is about, uh, it's a new uh, feature of the 1.2 update. It, uh, it's going to delay the computation of the, uh, of the new data over several frames. So you, you don't see any, uh, any issue when you're moving around here, but uh, when you're moving the brushes and you're updating the terrain at runtime, time, you might see some artifacts. Otherwise, you don't see anything. Uh, you don't see anything at all when, uh, when playing. It's just when you're editing the terrain. And the performance uh, boost is uh, is uh, really uh, really huge because uh, on my computer I'm able to uh, to compute everything at once uh, using the uh, using my GPU. But if you have a more uh, lower hand GPU, you might, it's going to be uh, extremely demanding. So you are delaying on multiple frames the computation of the uh, the updates. Mm, so we've seen. The new landscape materials. We've seen the segmented computation. We've seen the tessellation replacements. Uh, I also added the uh, runtime virtual texture support. So it's uh, I've coded it. It's implemented in the code. I haven't uh, fully tested it, but uh, you can see them. Uh, there's virtual texture there. And you can set it up, and it's uh, going to be applied to the uh, to the landscape. I haven't uh, tested it out fully, but uh, it should it should work. Uh, is that my brush are now able to change the materials and the water material the water material has been updated all right I think uh, I think I've covered it all lots of updates it was all uh, within a, a week or two and uh, I think uh, I think it's gonna make a big difference it's a really really uh, new really cool update for our shadow world with uh, lots of improvements. I think the, the segmented updates uh, over multiple frames is going to make a huge difference for lower end uh, and uh, mid range, uh, mid range, mid range configuration. So uh, that's all. I think you're gonna have a good time, uh, good time with this one. Just gonna jump to conclude on the CS uh, Redwood demonstration because I, I I was playing around with it uh, earlier and. Uh, it's really cool because it's uh, the Redwood Forest is having a, a lot of procedural stuff set up already. So Redwood package, Redwood Forest procedural. I've just drag and drop the stuff in it. It's really cool. can see what I did here is actually really simple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it live. 
So I, I, I wanted to spawn the... Okay, so there's a rocks. Uh, where are the trees? Those are the trees, okay. Got him in his spawnable. I'm hanging up. It's a procedure for oh it's a procedure fish but my bad okay now I want the trees the trees directly I'm gonna go into this uh, foliage folder I'm gonna filter into the foliage I'm just gonna grab the trees here it's just to show you how easy it is to uh, to set it up just dropped the, uh, the demo map, the demo uh, sh the shadow world reference in, into the world. Okay, so there's way too much, too many trees, too much trees. I'm gonna reduce the density. It's just too many. Okay. I'm gonna grab the rocks. I'm gonna create a new spawnable. <coughs> Drop it in. Okay, too many rocks. I drop the density. That's good. Okay, why not? So the small trees here. Set them in. Too many. I'm dropping the density. That's good. I don't see any grass. Uh, let's check for grass. Okay. I'm gonna add some uh, needles on the ground. Okay, that's cool. Let's see if I can add some uh, ferns. Okay, it's on the ball. I'm gonna drop some ferns. Okay, that's cool. Right inside the moss. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's it. Let's have a look around. I really like this uh, this vegetation package. It's looking great. Thanks for watching.